The serene environment of Nairobi's Gymkhana Club, coupled with a perfect breeze, offers just the right environment for this group of cricket players turning up for a training session. The players initially huddle themselves together for a mandatory pep talk from their instructor before proceeding to practice fitness drills. From the onset, one seldom fails to notice the determination this group harbors of achieving their objectives. After all, the determination to don Kenyan colors on the ultimate sporting stage has always been motivation enough and plays a pivotal role for these players. In addition, these groups of players have to shoulder an extra burden of exercising past ghosts. Ghosts that have haunted this team for the better part of the last decade, where Kenya's cricket teams in continental and international assignments have gradually but consistently been relegated from giant killers and world beaters to mere participants. The journey of tracing the glory of Kenyan cricket begins here. A closer look at this training camp reveals some of the issues that might have played a considerable role in the recent dismal results registered by the Kenyan national cricket team. For starters, the interest or lack of it in the affairs of this team is appalling. The absence of cricket fans or even curious onlookers at this session describes the current state of affairs for this team that was once the talk of the town. Worse off, no cricket Kenya official or government inspector is available to oversee this session as the team intensifies preparations ahead of a competition that could decide Kenya's immediate future. We are preparing our, 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 ourselves for two 2020 games and uh, two, in, two, two ODIs. If uh, we do well and uh, come number one or, or two, then uh, automatically we do qualify for the World Cup. Once upon a time, securing a World Cup slot for the Kenyan team was attained by default. The International Cricket Council considered Kenya's impressive performances as good enough to guarantee the team a slot. That the team will have to fight for a position at the upcoming Premier Cricket Sporting Competition demonstrates further how Kenya's stock has fallen. The history of Kenyan cricket is quite sketchy. It is believed the Asian and Indian communities introduced the sport in Mombasa initially as an amateur venture during the colonial era. Thereafter, the sport spread inland towards other parts of the country and gradually attracted the interests of locals. I was brought up at, at Parklands. My dad was working at Akan Hospital and Akan Sports Club was next there. So the, the background of the Asian community could be a, a little bit of influence for me to play cricket because when I started playing cricket, uh, the neighborhood, all the kids we have were only playing cricket. However, it wasn't until the 1996 World Cup staged in India, Pakistan and Sri Lanka that Kenya made a solid case on her potential on the international front. A win over the West Indies was, however, the only highlight for the East African nation who had been seeded in a tricky pool that included Australia, India, Sri Lanka and Zimbabwe. Crucially, this performance was impressive enough for Kenya to earn recognition from the powers that be, which awarded the country the one-day international status. Kenya, however, failed to build on this performance during the next World Cup staged in England three years later. Five losses in five games also highlighted the inconsistency and lack of experience by Kenya on such a stage. The 2003 World Cup, co-hosted by South Africa, Zimbabwe and Kenya, remains the best performance posted by the Kenyan national cricket team at any World Cup. Did Kenya beat Zimbabwe, who was a test-playing nation and we had never beaten them before? The answer is yes, we won, because we played hard. We beat Sri Lanka here. We did, and Sri Lanka reached the finals of the World Cup. I was so much fortunate to be with my three brothers on the same on the same World Cup, so that it made it very special. But the bottom line is, we did very well on that World Cup. Some of the standout players during these moments that catapulted Kenya to fame include Maurice Odumbe, Steve Tikolo, and Kennedy Obuya. The Kenyan cricket team was thereafter treated granted celebrity status after achieving what most referred to as unthinkable. This performance was heralded by most as the start of a dominating tenure by Kenyan cricket on the world scene. 
Interest in this team and cricket in general from the Kenyan government, corporate world and the general public grew overnight and spread like bushfire. Sadly, this performance turned out to be the last major success to be associated with the Kenyan national cricket team. Join us tomorrow as we take a look at how matters turned from bad to worse amidst claims of negligence from the government, wrangling and a lack of adequate infrastructure. Plus, the way back. I want to start with under 19 of course and then go on to the further stage play for the national side and go for uh, tours and stuff, play in the World Cup and go through to the finals and bring the trophy back home. You can see where I'm an optimist. I can see bright future for cricket and I can see big things coming ahead for cricket. And so let's get the, the grounds, let us get the players playing in schools and elsewhere. Let us get the technical expertise.